Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics and Function. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so we talked a lot in the few previous videos about Michaelis-Menten kinetics and how we can transform the Michaelis-Menten equation into the equation that you see right here. And this is called the Lineweaver-Burke equation. The reason this equation is very useful for determining kinetic parameters is because, as you can see here, and we talked about in other videos, it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. And that's the generic equation for a straight line. Straight lines are much easier to deal with than the Michaelis-Menten curve, which is hyperbolic in nature. We would much prefer to force something into a y equals mx plus b if possible. Okay? And the way the, the line weaver burke plot works is you're going to plot 1 over the initial rate versus 1 over the substrate concentration. Notice that the y-axis and the x-axis are both reciprocals. Therefore, you also call line weaver burke plots double reciprocal plots. Okay? Now, in this video, we're, we have a situation where we did this in Excel. So we, this is something you would do in a lab. Okay? We, we plotted the data. We got a straight line and we used something like Excel on Microsoft or we used numbers on Mac and we got a y equals mx plus b equation which is circled there on the plot. This is the most accurate way to do it. Okay? Line weaver burke plots are number one more accurate than Michaelis Menten to begin with, but out of the two ways you can do line weaver burke plots, generating an equation is the most accurate way to do this. And if you're doing this in the lab or research setting, you would always do that. The other way, which we're going to cover in a separate video, is analysis of the line weaver burke plot without that y equals mx plus b. In this case, you have to extrapolate the data and basically eyeball it. You would never do this in a research or lab setting. This is something you would more or less do on a test if you were forced to. You would never do this in real life, but it's the same concept except you wouldn't use a y equals mx plus b, and there's a different way to go about doing that. Okay? All right. So why don't we go into how you do this? All right, so just a quick recap from the theory videos. 1 over v0 is the y. The slope of the line m is the km divided by the vmax. x is 1 over the substrate concentration, and the y-intercept b is 1 over the vmax. Now, the first thing I would go about doing is determining what kinetic parameters you might want. All right, let's figure out what kinetic parameters we might want, and there's always four. The kinetic parameters are Vmax, Michaelis constant Km, rate constant K cat, and the catalytic efficiency epsilon sub c. Those are the four kinetic parameters we will report for enzyme kinetics. All right, so the Vmax using this kind of problem is by far the easiest one to determine. You will need a calculator for this or you'll have to enter it in Excel. One thing that's true, and we can actually see this right here, that the y-intercept b is 1 over the vmax. So why don't we go ahead and figure this out. So b is equal to 1 over the vmax. What is b given in this problem? It's actually given straight on the equation. The b, the y-intercept, is 0 0.0064. And if I wanted to include the units of it, it would simply be seconds per micromolar. That's what's given here. So this is seconds per micromolar. So how would I determine the Vmax? The way I would determine the Vmax is I would simply take the reciprocal of everything here. Take the reciprocal. So that's going to give me the Vmax is equal to, let me use my calculator and take the reciprocal, 0 0.0064. And I have determined the Vmax is 156.25 and that is micromolar per second. That is the Vmax of this enzyme. Okay, And again, I did that because I, I can take the reciprocal of the y-intercept. The reason I do that is the y-intercept is the reciprocal of the Vmax. is equal to the Km divided by the Vmax. Right? Km divided by the Vmax. If I want to find the Km... That is just equal to the Km over the Vmax times the Vmax, right? Because if I multiply Km over Vmax times Vmax, that's the Km. But this also means that if I want the Km, I'm going to multiply the slope of the line times the Vmax, all right? And just for reference here, the slope of this line, let's figure out what the units would be. 
is we want to make sure we get that right because some professors are a little more anal about units being right.